What's cooking guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can add an echo and reverb effect to the end of your music track to allow it to have a natural ending like this. Let's get into it. All right guys, so here I have a little promo video that I'm working on and I want my music track to end right where my video track ends and kind of just echo and reverb out. I don't want it to continue going. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna locate where that beat is in our song where we want our natural ending to start happening and where we want that echo and reverb effect to start happening. So for me, in my case, here I have the song. I wanna end it right there. And I don't want the continuous like So I just want that one beat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the C on my keyboard for the cut key. And I actually have a marker on it already, so that's kinda cool. So I'm gonna cut that there. And I'm gonna cut it right after that first beat. I don't need anything else. I can just delete all of that. I literally just need that one beat and I'm gonna continue having that reverb and echo effect all the way through as long as I want it. So once you have that beat down, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this onto a separate layer. And the reason why we're pulling this on a separate layer is because we're gonna be adding this effect to the whole entire layer because we want it to continue going after that beat and after our video track. And if we are applying it to a track, you don't want anything else affected. If I kept this beat on this track and put the effect on it, it's gonna affect the whole entire track. You're gonna have this whole reverb and echo effect throughout the whole thing, and you just don't want that. So you wanna pull it on a layer of its own. So now that I have it on this layer, this audio three layer with nothing else on it, I can actually start working on my effect. So now what we wanna do is we want to locate the audio track mixer. For me, it's right here, audio track mixer. If yours is not anywhere on your timeline, just go to Windows, and you should be able to locate audio track mixer. And when you click it, it should pop up whatever window you're in. So here I have my audio track mixer. Now we wanna locate the channel that we're in. Like I said, we are in audio three. So right here, audio three, this is the channel we're gonna be in. And this is the channel we wanna put the effect on, but where are our effects? So to actually be able to see your effects, you need to drop down this menu right here. And this kind of gives you all these like swatches where you can put different effects on and everything. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna click on this first slot and we're gonna look for reverb and we're gonna do a studio reverb. And then we're gonna listen to it. And you really can't hear a difference right now. It doesn't sound any different just because it's not playing past this beat and needs to continue to play. And to allow that to actually happen, we need to have like some sort of placeholder for the length we want that echo and reverb to last. There's a couple ways you can actually do this over here if you hit the new item. You can do an adjustment layer, a uh, black video. I like to just use a black video, which is easier for me. Uh, I'm just gonna hit okay. You can double click on it and pull it. Actually, you don't really need to double click on pull it. Minus out a couple times. And I'm just gonna make this the length of my echo reverb. It doesn't really matter now. You can adjust this at any point later on. And now we'll just give it a quick listen. And now you can kind of hear it fade out at the end a little bit like the and it kind of carries a little bit. So now we actually kind of hear the effect, but now we want to make it a lot greater. So now we actually want to adjust that effect. So what we're going to go and do is we're going to go back into that audio track mixer, double click on our studio reverb. And like I said, here are our effects. Before we start touching anything, I'm going to give you a quick little tip is I like to loop my audio so I can just keep allowing it to play over and over again while I'm actually adjusting these so that I don't have to keep moving the playhead every single time. So a quick way to do this, I'm gonna move this up just a little bit. I'm gonna go to like a little bit of the end of the song, hit an end point, go to the end. I'm gonna use my up and down arrow keys to get to the end, hit an out point. And then over here, there's a loop playback. If you don't see that, hit this plus arrow and then there will be a loop playback like right here. You just grab that and you pull it down and then hit okay. And then you can just toggle that loop playback on. And now when I get to the end, it'll just play again. So the first effect we're really gonna wanna change is the decay. I'm gonna jack up the decay all the way to 10,000 and now you can really hear it. So this is what it would sound like with no decay. Just nothing and then full decay. So that's exactly what we're looking for is that full decay. And now the next two switches that you're mainly gonna use that will give you this effect easily is these dry and wet output level settings right here. So I'm just gonna play this and kind of adjust them. You'll see what the difference sounds like. Zero dry. Kind of pointless, doesn't really do much. 100%. Kind of builds up a little like, Dah. So I'm gonna keep that kind of where it was at is 80. And now for wet, 
Let's put that at zero. Nothing, and then a hundred. That's actually really good. I might bring that down to around 80 as well. And it actually sounds really good. I'd be fine with that, but I'm actually gonna show you a few of these other switches here that you can mess with to really fine tune them. And I'm not gonna go through each and every single one of them and explain exactly what they do because I barely know what they do. All I go off of is what they sound like. And that's why I just loop it and then I just mess with them and kind of just fine tune out how I'm hearing them. So that's what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna loop it and kind of go through all these and you're gonna be able to hear the differences and what all of them sound like. And then you can do the same thing and fine tune it exactly how you want it. So the first thing is room size. For some reason you can't play it and toggle that on at the same time, but this is what zero room size sounds like. Full room sound. I don't know, I don't really notice that much of a difference, so I'm just gonna keep it around where it was. And a good thing to remember is where the switch was originally, because when you pull it to zero and then pull it to 100, you're like, I don't like either. Where was it at before? At least you kind of know if you try to remember it. Um, decay is fine, and now we're gonna do early reflection. Ugh, that doesn't sound great. Keep it around where it was at. Um, width. Zero. Kind of just gives it a little more echo. So I'm gonna keep that around like kind of like 70. Almost kinds of like there's a, like it's like a screech almost. Maybe I'm just hearing things, but I'm gonna just keep it around there. And then high frequency. No. Ooh, I kind of like that. More kind of deeper tones. Maybe not so much. Ooh. Yeah, I kind of want mine to like hit and just be like a quick like and echo out. I don't need it to continue to echo that much. So I kind of like having my high frequencies maybe on the lower side and then my low frequencies on the higher side. And then damping. Kind of adds to that like vroom, and then kind of just slowly echoes out. And then diffusion. So I kind of just adjusted some of my settings a little bit more to really fine tune exactly what I'm looking for. And this is kind of what I came up with. So once you have it adjusted exactly how you want it, what we can do is we can close out of this. And now the last thing we want to do is kind of just fade this effect out. And to actually do that, we're gonna come over to here where the A3 is, and we're gonna double click right next to kind of where this voiceover record is to expand our track. And then here you see this show keyframes. I'm gonna click on this and go to track keyframes volume. You'll see this line come across, and this is where we can put keyframes to kind of fade it out. Um, I like to start my first keyframe basically right at the end of uh, that beat. So right here, and then I'll just come over here and add a keyframe. And then I'll just go towards the end of my adjustment layer, down arrow key, add another keyframe, pull that to zero. Now I can just give it a listen. A little too abrupt for me, so I'm gonna actually just kind of pull this out and adjust the video layer a little bit longer. And I can just pull my keyframe out to the end of that. Maybe pull this out a little bit more. Uh, give this a quick listen. And at this point, you can just adjust the keyframes how you want it. Completely customizable, up to you. Whatever you feel like works for you. But for me, this works. All right, guys. So pretty cool effect, that reverb and echo to make that natural ending to your song. It works all the time and I've been using it so much on my videos recently, it is a game changer. If you like this video, make sure you like and always just subscribe, it really helps me out. I appreciate it guys. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one guys. Peace.